Hey everyone, if you don't know the phrase, end him rightly, then you're either new to the sword community or you've been living under a rock. So it comes from Lichtenauer's 1430 manual about judicial dueling, and it, it's a technique that tells you to unscrew the pommel of your sword, throw it at your opponent, and then while they're confused, end him rightly, or to kill him. And it pertains specifically to judicial duels, uh, where you're given a shield, a spear, a dagger, and a sword. And this is a standardized thing. And so then judicial duels happen when you have an, a disagreement between two parties and the courts can't settle it. So they say, we'll just leave it up to God. Whoever, the, whoever gives in or dies, then the other person's the winner. And they were on, in the right. Now, as much as honorable duels and dueling for honor is cross-cultural, I also think that mockery and trickery is as well. And so I was thinking, there's got to be some Asian equivalent to end him rightly. And I found that there is. So in 1607, then Musashi, the, the well-known great samurai Musashi, he has a duel aged 24 against his opponent who only goes by the last name called Shishido. And Shishido's a well-known user of the chain sickle. So he's got a sickle in one hand and it's got a chain with a weight. So it's quite a long-range weapon. And Musashi goes and he, he comes and he battles him. And in the duel, then he draws his swords. So he uses two swords, Kitana and Wakizashi. And he draws them in the reverse order. So normally Musashi would hold the katana in the right hand and the wakizashi in the left hand. But in this duel, then he holds them the reverse way. And there's a very specific reason for this. So he closes in on Shido and he raises the sword over his head and then he throws the short sword at Shishido. And Shishido goes, what the heck? And it sticks in him and Masashi uses the, the katana to end him. And so I thought, how would one do that? There's a lot of ways to throw a sword. But in this story, the accounts of it clearly state that the sword stuck in Shido's chest. So I went and I tried a few different ways of throwing a sword. And I came to the conclusion that there's only one way that would have worked this way, but I'll show you my results of sword throwing. So for sword throwing, then I tried from waist height throwing it this way, tried throwing it over, also throwing it under. But the way that I found that would actually result in sticking in someone's chest is to have two fingers behind the guard, throw it on the blade, and to throw up like a spear. And I think that's the only real way that it could have been done for it to actually stick in, the, in someone's chest. However, the other ways still have the what the heck factor, still make the opponent reel back so that you can take that moment of surprise to end them. And so a lot of you might be thinking, well, isn't that a little bit dishonorable. And yes, it is dishonorable, but is it wrong? And Musashi had this mindset that uh, the purpose of a duel is to win at any cost because it's a life or death matter. And we see that in his first duel ever. So it's 1596 and Musashi's age 13, never been in a duel ever before. He's trained in a sword style and there's a well-known samurai who's trying to gain fame who comes to his town uh, called Arima Kihei. And Kihei issues a challenge saying, I will take any life or death duel. Anyone can, can take it. And Musashi says, yep, yeah, I'll do it. And Musashi's a young lad, he's 13 years old. So his uncle goes and he talks to Kihei and says, you know, he's a young boy, he doesn't know what he's doing, please throw the duel, can you just call it off? And Kihei says, no, that's not the honorable way. The honorable way would be if Musashi comes and had the duel in front of all the spectators, he apologizes to me. Now Musashi turns up to the duel without a sword, with a six foot long stick, and um, Kihei takes that as a challenge, draws a sword, moves into attack, and Musashi with brute strength, no talent, no skill, no finesse, no style in it, he just beats him and bludgeons him to death with this stick. So you see very early on that he doesn't take dueling as this completely honorable matter, he takes it as a, a challenge that he has to win. Now people question, how did a 13-year-old boy turn up with a stick and blood in, uh, a well-known swordsman with great skill to death? And you've got to take it this way. Masashi is a monster. He's, he's, apparently he was six foot tall uh, and very well built. And at the time, the average Japanese height of the males was about 150 centimeters. So he's got this huge reach advantage. He's big, he's strong. Even at the age of 13, that he could take down someone who'd been training in, with swords most of their life, had great fame as a samurai. Now, one of Musashi's most famous duels is against Sasaki Kojiro, or Kojiro Sasaki, depending on which way, if you put it 
as the surname first, and it'd be Kojiro Sasaki. And so in this duel, then, it's 1612, Musashi's age 29, and Kojiro School and Musashi have a little bit of beef with each other. So they decide to take it to a private duel on Ganryo Island, and no one's gonna know, there's gonna be a, a judge there, and he will tell the results of the duel, but no one's actually gonna know the actual events. And so a lot of the events surrounding this have been dramatized, but what is known is that Musashi turned up late, again, quite disrespectful, to provoke um, Kojiro, and he doesn't bring a sword. Instead, he spends his time whittling a wooden sword. And the reason for that is because Kojiro has a pretty large nodachi, and it's known as the drying line, or like clothing line, because of its, its length. So this is to mock him again. And without using a sword, then Musashi takes this inflamed, irritated Kojiro, and again, bludgeons him to death, and then leaves the island. And so you see all of these dramatizations about that duel because it's a particularly famous duel, but the actual specifics of the duel aren't known, only those two things. So a lot of people took the creative license on that. But you get to see this snapshot into Masashi's head, the duels are to be won. And he also talks about in his book, The Book of Five Rings, how to irritate your opponent so that you can take the key time to win. So he turns up late to his duels, he does things that particularly infuriates them just to get on their nerves so they can have that edge in battle. Now, it's not to say that Masashi's methods are wrong. It's just that they're a little bit questionable as to whether they're an honourable method. Um, not many people would say, yes, that's, a, that's the right way to win a duel. But they can't also say that was wrong to do in a duel. It's the same as end him rightly. Unscrew the pummel, throw it at your opponent, and then while your opponent is in that what the heck moment, then go and take him down. So I hope today was interesting, I hope you learned something. Um, if you want to know more about Musashi, then check out this book, The Book of Five Rings. Um, this particular one is a, a version written by Alexander Bennett, and I think it's a really good one, because Alexander Bennett treats this not as a translation, but as a written paper. He tries and finds every little source that he can to back up and try and find the exact events that happened. And there's a lot of footnotes, it's a lot more detailed than other versions. He also goes into a biography about Musashi and tells what's known and what's not known, and debunks all the myths. Now it's not a sponsored item, but I think it's really good, so if you're interested, check it out. And I'll see you next time.